On the end of the phone now, it's Martin Lee. Good morning, Martin. Good morning to you, sir. I tell you what, uh, my wife, Mrs. Charles, is a big, big fan of yours. So much oh. so that, uh, what I would say, probably 77, 1977, 78, she saw you out on a tram. She had a picture taken with you on a tram in Blackpool. I think you were recording, was it Summertime Special? Oh, most probably, those kind of things, yeah. That's what, what we used to do in those days. That's when you had proper entertainers on, entertaining us on a Saturday night. Well, but there was so much more music around, wasn't there, in the 70s? Um, I mean, today it's all iPads, iPods, this pad, that pod, this, you know. Um, I don't know what pod they're into now. <laughs> um, but, you know, we, I mean, television, again, it was only three stations, wasn't it, in the 70s? So if you wanted to send, nobody had recorders and, you know, Sky and Beam It Down and all this kind of stuff. So if you wanted to see a show or whatever, you had to stay in and watch it, you know. Absolutely. And when you used to, you're talking about there about uh, iPods and all this, you used to go into recording studios, not in your bedroom or your, your shed or your garage to record songs. You had to go to a proper recording studio, wherever it may be. Some people went to somewhere exotic, like Montserrat and things like that. But yeah, you used to go to a proper recording studio and record the songs. Well, exactly. I mean, t how many hits today have come off of, like, uh, a young lad sat in his bedroom or, or on his computer uh, and he's put it together um, and, bang, you know, he's got a top ten. You mm. just just happen to put it on the internet, you know. I mean, the whole world's changed in, in every which way, but in the music way, it's completely changed. I mean, I, if someone said to me, go to um, a record company, well... <laughs> I wouldn't know where to go nowadays because you think, well, where are they? Yeah. Do they still exist? You know, I used to look forward to Top of the Pops, you know, um, you know, ba -da 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 all that <laughs> every week, and you see who's in the top ten and who's number one, and I mean, I couldn't tell you who was number one or number num number 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 one, or I, I have no idea. And you're in the Guinness Book of Records, aren't you? The Guinness Book of Records for uh, Save Your Kisses From Me. It is the biggest selling Eurovision single ever, I believe. That's what they tell us. I mean, which is, uh, and, and uh, not only that, uh, we still hold the um, record of the, by the most ma majority of points. And that, I mean, okay, people say, how can you hold the record when you got 169 and last year got uh, 350 or whatever it was? Ah, but that's over 40 odd countries. Yes. So if you break that down, their, their, the percentage they got was about 150. So ours was 169 on uh, 18 countries. So uh, when you work it out points-wise and percentage-wise, we still hold the record of that. And I've got to ask you about this then. Eurovision, what do you think is going wrong with it for the uh, United Kingdom now? Because uh, are we ever going to win again? Well, I think there's always a chance of winning again. I mean, uh, I mean, our, our lady, um, Molly, she came, uh, what, 17th this year? Yeah, in the middle, wasn't um, it? Yeah? So that was a big jump up from uh, Neil Poir. Um, so there's always a chance, I think, of coming in again. Um, it's all, I mean, it gets harder by virtue of all the, the problems in the world today, and it's who votes for who and who doesn't vote for who and all this kind of thing. The old politics start coming into it. Mind you, it was always there. It was there even in our day, but not quite as um, pronounced as it is today. Uh, but there's always a chance of winning, I think. I mean, look, it's the biggest song contest in the world. Um, I mean, 120 million viewers can't all be wrong. So, um, you know, and I think it's a, a great spectacular that comes around once a year. It's like Christmas Day. Enjoy it for what it is. And... You know, just enjoy the spectacular. I know I'm in the business, so I look at I look at it differently, and and I look at the production and the sets and the lighting, and I mean, so much work goes into it. And not only that, people forget that the artists that are appearing in the show, they start that they're, they're, that's six months of their life to get that far because they've had to write the song, organise the song, get all the choreography. If they're doing that, they've got to work out dresses suits production the presentation uh, there, there's so much work goes into it, it, it people just don't realize and what happens then every year when it comes around to eurovision is your phone like a hotline that people want to talk to you and discuss eurovision or, or are you working on the night with or just keep it separate and watch the actual eurovision yourself or well this year we were working we were doing a show with bucks fizz uh, um down at um south sea we were doing a big show with bucks fizz down there and um 
Uh, normally, uh, we are working. Or, uh, we're usually either abroad or doing uh, shows or television or something. Uh, but we always try and get to manage to see it or we record it anyway uh, and look back at it. Because I just, as I say, I think it's a, it's a great spectacular to watch once a year. Uh, and uh, look, it's it's a good fun show. There's always the um, the comic in there, or the act that you know uh, is just <laughs> like, hey, how the hell did they get in there? Kind of thing. Yeah. I mean, but look, the bearded lady. I I picked all three. I picked the Dutch one, uh, the Netherlands. I picked the bearded lady to win, and the Swedish one. Um, those those were my three. Um, and I had bearded lady first, of course, because remember Dana International? Yes, I remember that Israel, wasn't it? Yeah, so, um, you know, <laughs> it was time for another one. <laughs> In Europe, you then, know. are you still quite popular around Europe? Yeah, we do a lot. We're uh, off to Latvia, uh, which we've never been to. We're, we go to Germany. We've got a, um, a, a small show there to do, five, six hits of our hits over there to do on a TV show. Um, we're running around. We were on the um, one show the other week, and... Uh, we do the odd thing, you know, we, we enjoy travelling around all over the place. I mean, we love entertaining the people, and we love, do, it's the travelling that kills you. Yeah, that's the worst it's, thing, it's isn't it? nothing else, it's yeah. only the travelling that kills you. I mean, it's like this week, uh, on Friday, um, at, at the Chorley Carnival there. Um, we love it, it's going to be fantastic, we love entertaining the people. Uh, it's the travelling that's the, the only bugbear, you know. Yeah, and you're coming up from Surrey. Yeah, exactly. You know, so you're looking at a four-hour drive. And on the uh, you, Friday on the M6 camp. as well. Ooh. Yeah, exactly, on the Friday. <laughs> so uh, exa- you said it in one. <laughs> and that's the bit that kills you. And then you've got uh, an hour or so sound check to do. Then you've got an hour or so show to do. Then you've got another four-hour drive back. Yeah. Um, OK. <laughs> Pardon me. I mean, if you could stay over, I suppose. But the point is, travelling in the evening is a lot better because you can get through all the roadworks and there's not so much on the road. You wait till the morning, you get up at 10 o'clock and you start off. You've got that, I mean, coming back will most probably be three hours, two, two hours 40 or something, um, whereas in the traffic you're looking at another five-hour job. Yeah. You know, I mean, you're exhausted when you get home. You get home at three in the morning or whatnot, but when you wake up, you're in your own bed and you can carry on the day as, um, as it was planned kind of stuff. And walk around in your pyjamas and do whatever you want to do. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> so you so mentioned you'll that. You'll be with us. I will so be, you'll with be with you. With us. I will definitely be with you on Friday. Looking uh, forward to it. Yeah, so you're on ab- stage about nine o'clock. Absolutely. And uh, singing all the hits. Yep, we got them all there, plus many more. There's nothing that uh, we, that our show, we, we try and um, adjust the shows to what we're doing, and uh, there'll be nothing there that the people don't know. We just like entertaining people and making sure they have a good time. That's the name of the game. And you are all the original lineup as well, aren't you? The original lineups coming into forty-three years in November. Uh, that is I mean, quite rare, isn't it, for bands like from the sixties and seventies to be in the, their original lineup? Exactly. I mean, we we must be mad. I mean, you know, we've been saying, oh, just another couple of years for the last thirty years. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, the first ten years, our feet never stopped, never touched the ground, and then we started to slow down, and then after twenty years, we said. Don't you think it's, you know, 20 years we've been doing this, you know, blah, blah, blah. And then it all started up again, and you do this and you do that. Then at the 30-year mark, you say, oh, and here we are at 43 years, still saying the same thing. So what, uh, do you honestly see a, a point in when you're actually going to stop, or do you want to continue to maybe get the 50 years? <laughs> 50? God. <laughs> <laughs> if I was... <laughs> If we were, like, uh, 27 years old, that wouldn't be a problem. Um, <laughs> but uh, I, don't, I don't think so. I think it will take its own natural progression, and uh, we will always be available to do various things and do the odd televisions and whatnot. But I think nature takes its course as in everything, and the phone will slowly die down, and um, we just say, we really don't want to do that. Like, you know, we get asked to go to Scotland and this, that, the other, and and do this, that, uh, you know, it's, if, if we could beam ourselves up and say, hey, beam us up, Scotty, we're there, for, uh, boom, here we are, great stuff, beam us home, no problem, go on till I'm 900 years old. Yeah. But um, that, is, that is the bit that will slow us all down naturally. And I think it just come to a natural uh, conclusion, you know, and look, we've had a fantastic journey. Nobody can uh, um, 
uh, knocked out. We've we've been the most privileged entertainers are the most privileged people there are around, without whatever they say, because we get applauded for what we do. Um, we have fantastic times. We travel the world, um, and we get paid for it as well. So don't let anybody ever kid you. We're the most privileged people there are, and uh, we're so humbled at uh, forty odd years on that people still come and see us and still sing the songs. It's we're very humbled with that. As I say, it, we're we're always amazed, you know, um, because we were never like uh, a Beatles or a Rolling Stones or a Queen. We never got to that kind of accolade, um, but we've done enough that, as I say, forty years on, people still know who you are. Uh, which is amazing. And uh, if memory serves me right, was it uh, Hilda Baker and Arthur Mollard did the uh, yeah. a comedy <laughs> version of Save Your Kisses for Me? Was yeah, it they did. Save Your Kippers for Tea? And that's it, Kippers for Tea. And I think, was um, that on the Pie Record label as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it had to be on Pie Records because you could always eat it. <laughs> 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 Kippers for Tea, yeah, and Hilda Baker... Uh, and uh, what was it? Baronite's done um, uh, Angelo. All oh, right. Uh, remember the old fish shop in Walthamstow? That's the one. Yes. Yeah. Long, Long ago, ago <laughs> in a fish shop in Walthamstow, uh, lived Dan and Joe, I think it was, or something like that. And um, oh yeah, that was that was really funny. I mean, those those see those were great days. There were uh, when people um, done uh, parodies of the songs and. Um, it was great fun, you know. I mean, we were working with the Baron Knights one time and an outs- outside place down in um, Surrey, down here. And um, we, were, we were both on the same bill. And uh, they said, would you mind uh, if we st- if we still done Angelo, you know, because uh, obviously you're going to do Angelo. Yeah. We said, no, do it, do it, you know, because it's a different thing, you know. And even today we say, does anybody remember the uh, Baron Knights version? And there's always somebody that says, you know... Bl- in a fish shop in Walthamstow. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Well, Which is great fun. It is. I'm looking forward to uh, seeing you on Friday. And in fact, I'm going to bring Mrs. Charles along. And if she's got this picture of her on the bus, uh, she can have a picture oh taken with God, you. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Bring it along. I mean, the fans bring stuff along and send us stuff in online and whatnot. And we say, no, nah, we never wore that, did we? Yeah. We never looked as bad as that. We, ne- I mean, the girls were just, they thought they were fat. They were just like... Well, there was more fat on a chip. <laughs> I mean, I mean, they and they used to say, "Oh, I'm too fat. We got to slim down." And I mean, I remember I used to have a 28 inch waist. Oh, they were the days. <laughs> oh, tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about it. They were the days. It's amazing, you know, when you look back at these pictures. You know, I mean, we were only on the box the other night, um, uh, at top of the pops the other night. Um, I turned it on and it said, oh, brother and a man. I thought, oh, God, what were we doing here? <laughs> I think it was uh, 78 or it was... Oh, it's on... Lover yeah, the repeat's on BBC Four, don't they? On the US. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, which is great for us. Yeah. Uh, because it's amazing how many people really... And this is where I think a lot of the time the children, uh, you know, the youngsters, uh, know because we wonder, how the hell do they know who we are? Yeah. You know, I mean, in today's world... Um, uh, but they do, and they're singing the songs. And we, but what it is, I think, it's the parents that tune into like the repeats of Top of the Pops and uh, all these uh, shows that we've done over the years. Um, they tune in, and of course, the kids—it's new to them—and so they go, "Oh, I like that song. I like this song, or whatever it is." Um, and bang, that's how they turn up at the shows with their mum and dad and all this kind of stuff, and they're singing the songs because they've. They've picked them up off of the... Um, the TV, yeah. TV again, you know. Yeah, lovely. Yeah. Well, listen, Martin, it's been nice talking to you. I could talk to you all day, and uh, <laughs> I'm no doubt... You'll be busy on Friday, but I'll speak to you on Friday as well. And if you want to, to get your tickets now, £15 they are, including food in a basket. It takes place this coming Friday, 7.30 the start. I'll be there playing some 70s music as well, getting people all ready uh, for the big night at 9 o'clock when you come on stage. Fantastic. Look forward to seeing you and look forward to seeing everybody there. Let's hope it's a nice evening. Fingers crossed, Martin. Thanks a lot.